let's go. Mic check, here we go. It's the kid plot coming out your stereo. I know they hear me because I'm in the All right. So I am having the great privilege of sitting here uh, across the airways through the screen with Eva Medina, also known as Little Beast Nina, or Rich Piana used to like to say quads. And uh, <laughs> if you have a look at this lady's quads, you'd know why she got that name. So how are you doing, Nina? I'm very good. I just woke up and I'm relaxed. And I'm good. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> so just what, so you put in some 12 hour days, you, you do uh, shift work, do you? Well, I work in a school, like I need to wake up like six o'clock and I work at uh, teaching in a school. I do ESL, like English as a second language. And I don't get out until 4.30 and then just go home, shit, shower, <laughs> get everything, take the dog to do his needs and go train and then i start working again at 8 30 until one o'clock and that's every day holy doodle that keeps you going mm. hey <laughs> yes so you're originally from barcelona spain take us through the journey of what brought you to the us of a and when that was and if i understand right you just recently got your green card didn't you yes finally um well i'm i'm north african and I was in um, in the Brave Coast. It's a little um, it's a little town from the coast of Barcelona. So I've been living there all my life. So well, um, kind of everything started uh, way back ago when I was a little, like fourteen, fifteen years old. Um, I started my journey with bodybuilding because. Um, I was not the average kid. Everybody there in Europe is a skin and small and all tiny. And I was just already huge. I don't know, big <laughs> legs, big everything. And everybody was looking at me like a, something weird. So I had developed a lot of problems over the time, like self-confidence problems. So I left my home when I was 15 because um, I had a lot of problems with my childhood, like abuse, mental abuse, physical abuse a very dysfunctional family. So I always have been a very happy person. I said, well, since I cannot control my parents, let me control my own life. So I left my home when I was 14. Wow. So, yeah, I decided I'm tired of this and I'm not dealing with this anymore. And then I said, well, let's get the fuck out. And that's <laughs> what I did. So, so 14 and you came right to the U.S. at 14? No. No, 14, I just left and left I started working. Yeah. I started studying. Uh, actually, I make it to the States when I was 27. But all that time uh, in Europe, I was trying to kind of look or find myself. And all the reason that I started with bodybuilding is because I always been marked uh, for the way I was looking. So I started my journey when I was 16, training, training, training. And one day I say, you know what? I'm sick and tired to be around here. I'm not going to say nothing to anybody. I'm just going to leave. And that's what I did. Wow. Wow. Yeah. You, 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 were, <laughs> no. you have a, an awful amount of, uh, you, you talked about, um, you know, uh, not feeling comfortable at times and, and wondering uh, if you felt like an outcast, I guess is what you were saying. But you have a, an, amount, an amazing amount of courage Nina, like just to say, like you said, fuck it. I'm just going to, I'm just going to up and get on my own journey and not let any, anyone dictate to me how my life's going to turn out. And that started young. Well, people don't realize that the, the funny thing is, I guess I'm the opposite as, as everybody else. I'm not, I'm not afraid of myself. I'm afraid of people in general. And people have the mistake to be more afraid of themselves than people. So, amazingly, I've never been afraid to be on my own or by myself because I've been used to. So, what scared me the most was people. I cannot control people. The only thing is I, is I can control myself. And I have learned that everything that you believe, um, you can achieve it. So, the power is, is in you. It's not in others. So, actually... For me, it's easy. It's the difficult is be around people. <laughs> <laughs> when, when, would, when would you remember that the first aha moment was to say, 
that anything like you just said, conceive, believe, achieve. When, when was one of the first moments you remember at what age that you, you had that come out within you and say like, fuck it, I'm going forward and anything I put my mind to, I'm getting there. When, when I was 14, imagine being 14 and say, you know what? I didn't tell nothing to my parents. I grabbed everything and I just like, I grabbed my little clothes, my music, and I just left. I lied to everybody. I get the job when I was 16. Uh, no, I mean, actually was 15 and I lied and said that I was older. And uh, I've been lying all my life about my age and what I was doing and everything. And then that's how I moved forward. And then the second time was, you know, in life when nothing, that you're smart, you do whatever you want, but nothing meant, have meaning because nobody cares what you do. So why do you want to be rich? Why do you, why do you want to be smart? Uh, why do you want to be successful if you cannot share that? So that was the little thing inside myself, like, oh, well, life don't have no meaning if people don't care about you. So it took me a lot to understand my childhood and my, my life. And I never understood that people is very self-centered. And... I could not dictate how my parents had to raise me and I cannot dictate how they needed to approach me. So that was very hard on me. So, and then you meet people and growing up, the only thing I didn't take off or didn't go away is my soul. I'm a very goofy person, positive. And I wasn't aware of people. I always wanted to please people and be, make people happy until I was getting a slap left and right. And I didn't understood why. And then I realized that the, the problem was people were not happy with themselves. You cannot make people happy. So it took me a lot to understand that you cannot make people happy and you cannot please everybody and you cannot pretend everybody likes you. That's one of the reasons that I said, you know what? Second time, fuck it, I'm leaving. I'm not <laughs> saying anything to anybody. I'm going to United States and, and let's see if somebody miss me. So... That's what I did. Nice. So, so when you said earlier, you got to the U.S. when you were 27, right? Yes. That's when you first came there. So, mm -hmm. uh, so how long have you been there now? Now are you going to tell us? Ten, you? <laughs> Ten years. Nice. And, and when you first came there, did you have a plan in mind or a connection that you were able to have right away? Or did you just pretty much just come there and say, okay, here it is. I got to get it going. Well, um, I met people and I rented a room. I wasn't speaking any English. Um, I rented a room and I ended in Atlanta. I ended in a very weird house and very <laughs> weird people. I was scared, like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> I was not speaking the language. I was thankful because they take me in their house, but people think completely different and it's just like damn people here is crazy I don't know how they think like that and many things shocked me in the beginning I was like whoa after six months to being in that place I just left I said I need to get out so I get the bus and I ended up I ended up in New Orleans and I rented another room and actually we had planned to come back but Happens a hurricane in 2018, the Augusta, and I lost everything. So I said, well, fuck it. I'll stay here then. So you're in New Orleans right now? Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. Yes. I, I did not know actually exactly where it was that you that you uh, reside right now. That's in New pretty... Orleans. I mean, 10 years, actually. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So so take me take me through the journey of uh, Rich Piana. How how you met him, how you got into his world and the five percenters, uh, what what drew you to that? And uh, take us through that journey. Well, um, one of the re I started I met few, when I came here in the States, um, I met few people who um, kind of introduced me a little bit on the bodybuilding world. I was I always been training. So when I was 27, I met a person, his name was Errol, and I said, I want to be a bodybuilder. And he said, well, you can do whatever you want, and you have genetics, and why not? So I started in 2007, wanted to compete, but I didn't know I could not compete. 
because I didn't have a green card, you need to be a U.S. resident or citizen. Mm -hmm. But I've been training and training and training people. Um, unfortunately, I met somebody and I married. <laughs> <laughs> He was a bodybuilder and unfortunately I married and it lasted just one year. He was a bodybuilder. Um, it was very fucked up because after all my life and all the things that I've been going through, I meet him and I said, well, a person who believes in God and respect himself before anything must be good for me. Jesus Christ, he was fucked up in the head too. <laughs> So he he joined the military and I was left by myself. He left after we married, like a week after we married. And actually we didn't intimate until marriage. So imagine you're living with a person for a year, then you marry, you intimate with that person and then that person disappeared for another year and left me with all the shit, like paying bills, everything. Actually, I competed for first time when I met him or when I was married to him. And because he was one of the judges, I didn't qualify. I said, well, what's happening? Why? <laughs> so everything was against me. But another thing it taught me to keep training and training and training. It became my world. And it's beyond a, a sport. It's a comfort zone. It's a, it's a place where it's you and you. And it's a place that... You control you and your emotions and your feelings and your anger, everything. So moving forward to that, um, I saw Rich Piano for the first time in YouTube. I said, look at this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> he don't give a fuck. Oh, he don't, I, don't, I didn't bother with the way he was looking. I was impressed by the fact that he was not as scared of who he was. Yes. He was not as scared of saying what he needed to say. So that's a unique thing that drives me on people that they don't afraid to be themselves. And that's one of the most powerful things. There's a matter that you have beauty, money. If you're not afraid of who you are and you don't afraid to show who you are, that's a special unique thing. So when he was talking openly about steroids and synthol and this and that, I was impressed. Not because he was doing that, it's because he accepted who he was, no matter what, regardless who. And that was very impressive to me. In nowadays, in the, in the life that we live in, that everything is so superficial and so superfluous and so fake. I said, I like him. And his mentality, everybody has flaws, but his mentality of fuck this and I do whatever I want, I achieve my dreams, I focus on what I want, and I help people. That's when I started admiring him as a person, not as a bodybuilder, because it's not the type of bodybuilding that I like, but as a person, I, I like him, some, something about him. So then I saw the videos and everything, and I never been seeking for sponsorships. Me never, never, I didn't bother to be representing no company, but one day I say, well, these motherfuckers, they train hard. And they don't give a fuck. They, and they do this all day long. Well, then I'm a 5 percenter too, because I don't give a fuck. I do whatever I want. And I bust my ass more than any other person. So I want to be a 5 percenter. But it didn't happen. I applied years and years, like two or three years. So somebody reached me and said, well, um, we're considering that you be part of the team because you're kicking ass. And I say, okay, well, that would be nice. But we're having more people. I say, okay. Uh, He's going to be a, a, in Las Vegas at the link. I say, okay. So I decided to go and just go to tell Rich Piano in the face. Hey, you don't know me yet, but guess what? <laughs> I want to be in your team. <laughs> uh, I want to be in your team. I mean, all the way in New Orleans to come to tell you that I need to be in your team. He look at me up and down and say, is all, with those motherfucking quads, <laughs> I want you in my team, you like it or not. So I get a sponsor right away in the middle of the Olympia and he calls somebody, hey, get the numbers and everything and she's a 5% now and that's how it happens. Wow. Very much. Wow. But you, you know, you go back to what you had said earlier, the conceive, believe, achieve. You are so driven. You are so driven 
mean it to just say, yeah, fuck it. I'm going to leave New Orleans. I'm going to go to Vegas and I'm going to meet this guy and I'm going to tell him that I need to be a part. Like, look at you go. So you, you've had this unattainable um, amount of courage your whole life. But I mean, no, your- I think, I think it's not courage. I think it's that I don't have conscience. Means <laughs> I just do it because I don't have nothing on my back. I don't have nothing, no one. So it's not courage. Is you do it because you have to. Nobody going to. I think that the people raise differently when you have people giving you everything. You yeah. expect that people give you things, right? But when you grow up, that you need to earn every single thing. I'm not aware of what is the limitation because it's a need. Make sense? Yeah. So, um, I'm not aware of what's a need. Well, let's put it different. I'm not aware what it's a want. I'm aware what it's a need. And people who have the tendency to have those wants and needs confuse it. And people keep giving them to people so people feel entitled. So when I go to get something, it's because I think I earn it. Not because I think that I'm going there because I have a pair of balls. No, I think I deserve it because I work hard. So people think, oh, you Aryan. I say, no, I'm not Aryan. It's just look at me. And I don't have nobody give me shit. So I think that I'm asking this because I need that. I need it, period. Well, and, and like you said, you worked your ass off. You dug deep and it got you to where you are. So that all happened. You became a 5% uh, nutrition uh, rep and uh, truly a part of a huge culture and following. I mean, like you said earlier, I, I admired a lot of things about Rich when he would get on there and tell it the way it was. And it was, it was to teach people too. He wasn't saying that, this is what you should do. This is what you should be aware of when you do this. And I mean, that's what I loved about him too. There was, he was honest and open and just, and just laid it all out there and take it for what it is. Right. He, so anyway, he was brilliant about that. Yeah. So you got into this family and uh, started hitting the shows and, and uh, tearing it up and, and uh, getting a lot of momentum with it. And uh, when did, when did that journey so when did it start? You said 2000. When did you go to Vegas? That was. That was like three years ago. Yeah. Three years ago. And then, and since they've made some changes, uh, corporately and, uh, since, uh, uh, may he rest in peace since the loss of him and, uh, rightfully so they had to make some decisions, I guess. Correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's all. I'm not saying it. I'm not saying anything because it's not my business. So. No, no, and that's what I appreciate. It's good. It was part of the journey, and here you are today, and uh, had some great things come of it, right? So that's pretty awesome. So, uh, Super League. How did uh, Super League find you, or you find Super League? Well, since I'm a little bit of crazy, no, I say <laughs> yes. You need to be crazy to be successful in life, and crazy, no, crazy. It's people. Okay, you have the crazy fucked up in the head and you have the crazy of, you know what? I don't stand for nothing. I'm just moving forward. And you need to have a little bit of crazy to do things. If you don't have a little bit of obsession or craziness or I don't give a fuck moments or middle finger days, people don't move forward because you're subjected to get stuck with what people say, what people do with your pyramids, all this. That's why people is not successful. People is afraid to win champions are made when people is not afraid to lose and that's why people don't have it clear that's why i say you need to be crazy you need to be obsessed with your goals if not doesn't happen um when rich piana died and they said that it was going to las vegas and i heard about the super league i didn't know what was i didn't have time and kind of sent an email and it was 15 days prior the Super League that I talked to. I, I have an a, a email from Sue, and she told me, well, we don't have, well, the invitations, they were closed, but since you're from 5% and um, we want you to the compete. I was so happy that I just had 15 days to prepare myself. It was rough. Yeah. Very rough. I had to lose like 17 pounds or 16 pounds in two weeks. Holy doodle. Yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> we, won't get into and, that. we won't get into that journey. It might make you bitter, Nina. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, whoa, it was, it was bad. 
but, but I'm, that's how it happens. It was like through the fact that I, I was going to win. I said, I want to win because I'm going to dedicate, I'm going to dedicate this to preach piano. So my mindset was, I don't care, it's 15 days, I'm going to win. That yeah. was my mindset. That I is think. awesome. And you just went in there and just laid it all on the line. That is some, uh, like it's, I've been in those rings and, and the energy and the fire and you guys go to a completely different place when you're competing in there. You know, you're doing the movements and it's like you're, you've left your body and <laughs> you've gone somewhere totally deep. I didn't know, I didn't know where I was going. I didn't have no idea what it was. I didn't, I didn't have no idea, seriously. I just get it there. If you tell me, oh, you know what's the Super Leagues? I didn't know what I was going to do. <laughs> but you were, you were going to give it to your all and you were going to dive right in and that's what you yes, did. Yes, it doesn't matter. Yeah, that's what I did. Yeah. Awesome. So your experience was good. Uh, do you see you carrying on to some more competitions in the Super League? Yeah. Yeah, but I had to... Um, I had this, well, you know, I'm working a lot. I'm working like 72 to 80 hours. And I had a small aneurysm and I had a nerve damage. So. And, and, um, this, is, and this is just a couple of weeks ago, correct, Nina? Like th three weeks ago. Yeah. I wanted, I talked to Sue because the first time um, I wanted to do the power series and I could not because I was working. The second time I got invited again, and I tell Sue, yeah, I'm going to do it because I have to do it. And I could not do it because a week prior that I had a small aneurysm and it leads me a small nerve damage. So again, I could not do the power series. Well, but I keep training my ass off, so I will make it happen anyway. Yeah, but this is still pretty scary. Uh, like an aneurysm is nothing to take lightly. Uh, but but walk us through that. What what happened? When did you know you didn't feel quite right, or what was going on there? Well, I guess because I sleep like four or five hours every day, and I keep pushing it. Like, can you imagine working 14, 16 hours and train and sleep and trying to do everything? So I've been going like that for six months because unfortunately I break a relationship, I move on my own. I decided to to take my journey again on my own. So one of the times that um, before I had my green card and everything, after I was married and I divorced, I become homeless. And I was for a year living in a shelter. And I say, well, now I need, now that I ended a relationship, I need to live on myself, with myself. I don't want to go back to have the bad moment to not be able to be responsible of my own. So we moved by fear. So for me to work one job, it was not enough. I had to work two jobs because I wanted to be self-sufficient. But also I didn't want to give up my training. So I guess everything popped. And happened to me that one day I was training, I was doing lightweight, I was doing about a hundred repetitions, whatever it was, like leg press with 45 pounds. And all of a sudden my, my head felt like it was about to explode. I had to hold my head and I felt like something just exploded in my head. And after that, um, it went away. But then a week after I was training again, and actually, I was doing heavyweight, and it happens again, and the headaches never, never went away. So it was scary because I, I felt my, hair, my head numb with needles and fire, and like if I have a five pound weight in my head, and my motion skills and my cognitive skills was like, damn, I'm clumsy by nature, and now is this <laughs> happening? Yeah. So I went to the doctor, and I told them, well, I don't know what it is. I know it's not a headache. Um, I have something wrong in my brain. I said, well, I'm not fucked up. I'm just saying I have something <laughs> wrong that is it's not normal. Um, they didn't pay me too much attention. And they didn't, they thought, oh, you strained your brain because training, blah, blah, blah. They gave me barbiturates. So I said, I told the lady, I took a bottle of ibuprofen through the day and this don't go away. I know it's not a headache. 
she gave me pills for migraine and that was getting me loopy make me fall asleep but the sensation of burning and whatever it was it will not go away i went back and i told the lady what part you don't understand that i don't have headache this i have something in my brain and it's not right and she said oh maybe you have a problem with the venous return and you didn't have blood flow and i'm like duh <laughs> something is not right so she took tests. My blood was fine. My sugar was fine. Everything was fine. And she sent me so home with some more medicine. And it's like, what the hell? Um, I told the lady, I said, this is not normal. We keep complaining. The neurologist called me the next day. I went super angry. I said, what happened if I die? <laughs> you know? And you all sent me the next day to the neurologist. Uh, what happened if I have something wrong? What, what if? Yeah. So I went to the neurologist and he kind of told me that um, for the symptoms that was nerve damage, they don't know probably what happened, but it could be like brain stroke or small aneurysm, but the first signs was nerve damage. He gave me a medicine. After I take it three days, I was fine. I mean, it's fine because I guess the medicine is for nerve damage. So nerve damage doesn't go away with a regular pain pill. So, um, taking that, I feel okay, just, it's antidepressant, but in a small quantities, it's used for nerve damage. So I'm dealing the effects of the antidepressant. And then when I wake up in the mornings, I feel like shit. And when I go to sleep, I'm with anxiety. So imagine that every day. Jesus. That is, it's uh, bad. yeah. Plus work the 16 hours, plus keep training and dieting and all this shit so but but by the sounds of it you're not slowing down or stopping you you're, you're, you're driving why? why do i need to be home sleeping and crying and saying oh what's going to happen it's my brain going to fucking exploit i'd rather exploit doing what i fucking like to do yes. <laughs> doing what you love right exactly yeah. that's awesome that that even, uh, well, you don't like the word, I'm not going to use the word courage again. You just, <laughs> but you have uh, an, un, an unattainable amount of strength. I'm going to put it that way. And to see the greater good in all things that are handed to you. Um, where did that come from? Like, is that because of what you went through as a child and, and where you are today? Uh, you just keep getting stronger and stronger. Another chink in the armor keeps building and, uh, but, but really, where do you think that came from? I've been told so many times, no, with everything, no. That the word, no. And that made me feel like tearing up because since I've been a kid, very little, I know constantly, no, you cannot have this. Beating, no, you cannot have love. No, you cannot have attention no you cannot have this no and no and no and i had a great role model my mom i didn't want to be like her and that's what stopped me from being like everybody else i didn't want to be like my mother i just say when i grow up i don't want to be like her i don't want to i don't want to that's why I, I do the things i do the way i do and if i can inspire somebody don't let them know Nobody tell you that you drink that stupid because the worst part is that you believe that. And I've been believing all my life that I was not good enough. I raised believing that I was not good enough, that I didn't deserve to be loved, that I didn't deserve to have Christmas, that I didn't deserve to have birthdays, that I didn't deserve, I don't know what. So it took me a lot to accept the fact that we are deserved to have what we want to have and we work for. Nobody, it's nobody, it's no one to tell you what you don't deserve. It's not up to you. So when I realized that people dictate who you are, what you do, what you deserve and what you don't, it's when people become miserable. And I'm not a miserable person. Despite all what happened, I'm, I'm a goofy person. I'm alive. I like to joke. So I had to be very much rinsed, uh, instructed. In <laughs> <laughs> introspective in 
to know why and what is my purpose in life. Why is, what is your purpose? Why? So um, when you grow up beating down, mentally abused, telling yourself no and telling people no, you're not good enough, you're ugly, you're fat, you this, you a disaster, you are like, fuck, <laughs> that is like how this fucking can be possible. Like, cannot be all so fucking negative. Like, I don't think that God made us like that. And then you realize that it's people who tell you that. Yeah. It, it's not you. And then when you start discovering people from outside that you don't know them, and they tell you, hey, you're fucking amazing. My face is like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you just say that. So if I tell you the truth, I'm not a weird of what's good or it's bad of me because I cope it with naturality. Makes sense? So if you tell me that you're amazing, it's fine. And if you tell me that you are a piece of shit, I'm gonna say, it's fine. Because I had to neutralize and cope with negative feelings so well that a positive feeling, it's not belief now. Makes sense? Yeah. So uh, one thing become positive but it take with it something negative so when people tell me oh you're beautiful cool you're <laughs> powerful yeah cool you are this i don't i can sense a value because we need to grow with that value we, your parents need to put you that in you need to grow with that and it's much harder to put that in yourself because you're subjected to your surrounding you still there? Yeah, yep. you're subjected to your surrounding. So when you need to do that for your own, damn, it's difficult. Very much difficult. The only thing that you can reaffirm that is doing great things. I don't know. I wake up this morning, I ride 20 fucking miles. Who does that? <laughs> Me. <laughs> so <laughs> that's, I'll I guess, why my journey came like that. I'll tell you who does that. A lady that took all her struggles in life and turned them into strengths. And that's you. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what you did. And I, I love your posts on Instagram. Everything you put on there or say in your words, like you said earlier, if that can make a difference in one person's life, Nina too, that maybe went through what you, that you have to say like, holy shit, look at this. Look at this lady lighting it up. Look at what she's doing. Look at the message she's putting out there. And that just made but me. But I'm not. I'm not sorry. You know, I'm not sad. I'm not angry. I, I forgive my parents. I forgive whoever. I have pain, but I'm not pity about it because that's who makes me today. Yes. And I have to be blessed. So I don't want the people be thinking, "Oh, poor Nina." I don't like that. So you had Nina for years and years and. You don't know who I am. Don't piss me off because I move mountains. And you just need to tell me you can't. That words are magic. And now it's funny because I say I just got my green card, right? And yeah. I never competed for MPC and never did nothing like that because I could not. And I said, I'm going to do that, Arnold. Arnold Amateur. That's fucked up. That's very crazy. And I say, I'm going to go compete in October. I'm going to qualify. And in March next year, I'm going to do the Arnold Amateur. Nice. That, that is the goal you've written on the table. That is awesome. Holy. Just because, think about this. People is just like, oh, let me compete in PC and let me qualify. Okay, let me get the shittiest show, the shittiest, easiest show in the United States. Let me win an overall without effort. And let me focus in the big picture. Why I need to compete with everybody else that's doing MPC, doing little shows? So that's my intention. Like saying, well, since I cannot compete nowhere else because the green card just let you compete for Olympia, amateur Olympia, amateur Arnold or Pittsburgh. I say, why I need to be focused on little shit when I just have three options? And those three options, none of them it's easy. So let me focus in the big picture. So I say, well, I'm going to work on doing amateur Arnold. And everybody's like, you fucked up in the head and say, yes, I am. Yes, I <laughs> With a big smile. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> shit. That Always is... I say, make, make big, big dreams, make 
dream so big that scared a small mind. I want people to be afraid of me. I don't care that they laugh about me. Like, oh, she's crazy. Yes, I am. Be yes. careful. You know, I, I'm coming. You, you, I love it. And you said that. And then when you were at the uh, this last Arnold Classic, you were there, you know, and I saw some of your pictures and you were holding men up. And I was like, fuck. <laughs> like, I don't care how much they weigh. It's just like you, you're just you and you're having fun. And you're like, get in my arms. I'm going to pick you up and I'm going to take a picture. It was so like, can I have a picture? Yeah. Oh, well, like, can I pick you up? He looked at me like 350 pounds, dude. I said, yeah, I can pick you up. All right. I've been picking up half Arnold. I said, well, I don't have a sponsor, but I'm going to, I'm just going to go around. So I become a part-time professional human lifter. <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, Nina, I, I want to, I want to ask you a question. And if, if you could shake a magic wand or you could just, now, nah, I'm going to say it though. Shake a magic wand and make anything come true or give anyone any kind of hope. What, what would you say? Just like shake it and it's going to happen. Um, I think the most important thing that people will should, should be able to happen and should be able to have pure it's like this. Look, I'm going to show you. This is our, us when we're born, right? Yeah. And when we grow up, our heart becomes like this, right? Because we learn about experiences and pool and things that happen in life. What happens when you're trying to put that paper straight? It's all wrinkled. It never comes in original form, right? And people, it's broken. And you can strain it up, but you cannot take the wrinkles and the scars. The only hope and the only wish that I will have for people is that they had a chance to have that original heart without losing themselves in the process, to lose themselves in something that they're not, just because somebody said. So that's my wish, that people had a chance to go through the scars of their heart and be able to reconstruct their heart in a very pure state that they are able to see that they are unique and they are able to do whatever they want because all the power is in them. It's a matter of belief. Nobody has power over you unless you let them. Oh my God. I, I'm, I actually have tears rolling down my cheeks and I don't mind saying that. <laughs> <laughs> that girl, that was absolutely beautiful. And that is not rehearsed and I put you on the spot. So you, you've had this thought and belief and, and wish for humans for a long time. And that's I don't like humans. And, well, let's I like get souls. It. Yeah. Let's get I into like that. Souls. So, so you like the soul and you can I tell don't like people in general, but, but you can tell if a person's being real or what they're about by reading into their soul is what you're saying more than that shell that they are. We're yes, just all, we're just, all just in a meat suit. We're just all sitting here in a meat suit. Yeah. Let's put that. It just takes 15 minutes to feel somebody. I can smell people. Like it just takes 15 minutes to look somebody in the eyes or just talk to someone. And some people go through, some people doesn't. So it's a gut feeling, you know? Absolutely. And, and probably because you were at a young age uh, on your own to defend for yourselves, you had to get that mechanism. You had to get that. It's, it's kind of like, there again, the chink in the armor. You had to have that. I'm right? like a ninja. I learned, Nina, I'm like a ninja. Nina the ninja. <laughs> like that. I, learned, I learned how to sort people to hide, to um, go behind forward without too much trouble and never being in problems and never being in jail and never... Never, never had problems as I become, I think that I like to perfect my ninja skills that people, unless they know about me, the better. And if you get to see me like him, I need to perfect myself more because I just want to attract good people. Very let Just few people, just yep. few. I don't want big people around me. I don't want crowds. I don't, that's why I don't post, in, I don't post booty or titties or nothing like that because that's not me i can i could i could be much more famous than i am but that's not me i can't 
Yeah. And that doesn't matter to you. You're doing it for the cause, not the applause, you know? And I, I don't do it neither for the people. I just do it for that one person that might need it. Yep. Just one. And and you must have over time uh, got some great comments on your post. Like I said, someone saying like, thank you. I needed that today. That many, I'm blessed because people respected me a lot. I never had, you had know, always the, the stupid dumb, or you fat, or you look like a dude, or whatever, well, I don't sweat it, but let's put the 98% of the comments, people are always very loving, and people is very receptive, and everything that I post is a life from inside out reflection. It's, it's me, it's not, fake news it's not superficiality it's not oh let me put a quote and a ass picture um no it's just, no no i can't it's me yeah it's my personal blog it's not that even attended to to people you know no it's just you oh, you said it earlier you versus you and it's your journey and uh Heck, if you if you can share that and make that difference nina like you said in one person and that's very admirable that's that's a wow moment I think that's pretty damn cool. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. So what is, uh, what is the next big thing in, in the world of Nina that you're going to put the hammer down on? You said you, you want to make it on the uh, Arnold Classic stage. Uh, what okay, else? that's the thing. I need to get my brain need to get better because I want to do the power series because I have something in my heart. I just kind of, I kind of missed two times. One, because I was working, other because... I'm sick on the head <laughs> <laughs> and I need to get better. So I just can't focus on competition for October, but I want to do the power series. I want to do the next super league three. I want to do qualify for nationals in October. And I want to do the Arnold amateur. You... I have a lot of ones. <laughs> well, I think that's a good thing, right? Doesn't that keep you driven and keep you going? Uh, but there's no use stopping at one when you can have four on the slate. <laughs> well, it's a reason why. It's just because I want to get a, a sponsor that pay me money. I don't want Superman. I need to get paid, you know? Yeah. So be so great that somebody come to you. It's like, you know what? I want to pay you. I say, yes, pay me. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. So, so that's kind of the end game. That, that's what you're looking for, right? That's what would be the ultimate for you is to say, I don't have to work this 14 hours anymore. I can go do what I love to do, and that's train insane and go light the world on fire. On Well, I'm not a professional yet because you need to give up some, something. I cannot be working 16 hours and be looking like a superhero. I, I just can't because I'm killing myself. So the reason I want to do the qualifying and I want to do the amateur Arnold is because I deserve to be paid to be able to be successful and just quit one job. I don't need to be without work and I like to work, but that's the purpose to be able to keep doing what I'm doing because um, if I don't have nobody who pay me, I don't care because I'm going to keep doing whatever, but it's a, it's a help with the struggle that I'm going, it doesn't matter if I get paid good, if not good too. I'm going to be millionaire one day. So. Yes, you are. <laughs> with that with that mindset and all you've been through and where you've come to, holy shit, yes, you will be. <laughs> but being millionaire doesn't mean being having money. You can be the richest person in the world with $1. Yeah, absolutely. I agree 100%. So I'm not worried. And, uh, That's why me. I don't have a sponsors. It's just because I could be sponsored, but I don't want to be giving an image for supplements, you know? I was at 5% because I believe in that. Yeah. It was not even for the supplements. It was for the movement. I barely take supplements. So uh, I don't want to be giving my face all my effort and all my struggle to promote a company. That's why it makes sense. Oh, what I've been going through. And I need to put my face to you, company. Who are you? I've been going through too much. I'm not the average person. I've been going through too much to give you for free my image. And that's good. You got to believe in yourself that way. Absolutely. That's part of the drive, right? 
Yes. And uh, so how about your little uh, partner in crime, uh, Bobo? Uh, tell Hello, us, Bobo. T- well, I, I want to hear about Bobo. Like, see, I, I love seeing some of your little clips there when uh, he knows you're the boss, but he knows when you're filming him and he kind of puts on a bit of a show with his somber face. <laughs> He's cute. Tell me about Bobo. Bobo. Bobo is a special dog. Bobo is an emotional support dog. Um, I've been robbed one day at gunpoint and I was in my house and they were waiting for me and I had somebody robbing me with a gun. So I had Bobo just to make me aware of my surroundings. So Bobo been sleeping with me for two years every night. So Bobo is an amazing dog. I never had to teach him nothing. And I realized that animals, they like humans somehow because when you interact with them to at the same level, they're gonna bring you much more than being a dog. So Bobo listens, talk to me. He uh, uh, hello. Yeah, there you are. He just got it. He wakes me up. Um he wakes me up. He pee pee by command, poo by command. Everything I tell him he does. I never teach him nothing. So Bobo is my best friend. It's my, it's a part of me. He did many things together. So it's not a normal dog neither. It's just amazing. I'm impressed. That I'm is. So at the start, you said you were robbed at gunpoint. And then mm-hmm. I thought you were going to tell me the superhero story, how Bobo took down the uh, perpetrators. <laughs> no, I pushed the perpetrators. I, I just like, it was very funny. Look how it is that when you don't have nothing in life, you're not scared. So I had somebody pointing with a gun on my head. And I was like, what are you doing? And I pushed the dude. They said, take that thing out of my face. Take whatever you want, but don't put that in my face. If you're going to kill me, you're going to kill me anyway. So, but not on my face. <laughs> and they kind of were shocked. And they just took everything and left. And I told the police the same thing I'm telling you. And he told me, you're crazy. I'm like, no shit. I guess I am then. <laughs> I, you know? But imagine somebody, I never had somebody point me with a gun. So imagine that you have somebody point you in your face. Don't put that thing in my face. If you're going to kill me, just kill me, but no on my face. Jesus. <laughs> oh, Nina. Your, your, your <laughs> strengths that as I'm talking to you, just keep building and building. <laughs> I don't think it's crazy. I think it was survival at one point. That it's turned, instinct. Yeah, that turned into instinct. Absolutely. That's, it. That's why Bobo is with me. He helped me. I have a lot of anxiety. I guess there's a lot of post-traumatic stress. Imagine abuse, physical abuse, living in yourself for 14. Um, loves of your life just leave you. Marriage messed up. Another abuser. And always being abused. abused. So Bob is the only one who doesn't abuse me. You know, it's like, he's a great. So he's a He's an abuser of love. All day, mama, pet me, mama, pet me, pet me, pet me, mama, what you doing? Mama, give me that. Mama, what you eating? Can I have some all day long? Man, God's sake. I guess that's why they say uh, only a dog can love unconditionally, right? And isn't that the truth? He's not there to judge you. He's there to be everything for you and to you. I mean, he's, he's you, amazing. Yeah, you can yell at him and tell him to get the hell out. And guess what? He's going to come back and kiss your feet. So, I mean. No, yeah, he just look at me and just lick me like, shut up. I'm like, <laughs> okay, good. But you know the funny thing? If you turn the word dog, backwards is God. Wow. I, I've never taken the time to actually analyze that. Hmm. And he's the only animal that will stop being themselves to please you. That's the truth. That is a lot of truth right there. So it's big what I'm saying, but something they need to be so special with those with the dogs. I don't know about all the animals, but dogs is something beyond normal with those animals. It's the only animal that is made to please human beings. And how did the name Bobo come about? How did you come up with Bobo? <laughs> it's cute. Don't get me wrong. His name was Toto. Okay. Uh-huh. Toto. But I always have the tendency to change names. So Toto, boy, boy, Bo, Bo, <laughs> Bobo. And that's how it came out. Nice. From Toto to boy, and can keep saying boy, I show it to Bo, and then I duplicate the Bo by two, and then it's Bobo. 
<laughs> There's a formula to the dog name. Nina. <laughs> yes, that's what happened. Bobo was a formula based on the name it was Toto, and then from Toto boy, boy, and then from boy, boy, and then Bo, Bobo. So that's what happened. Oh, that is awesome. That yeah, is awesome. my brain is too big sometimes. <laughs> So uh, take us uh, take us in in a day of of Nina a little bit. So I I know you work long hours, but I always like to get into a person's uh, personal uh, life, but yet how your structure and your discipline works on a day to day to get all of this done. So the time you wake up, yeah, what you do and where you go and <laughs> well, look, I wake up. Let's just start. Hold on a second. Let me put my battery. So I I wake up around six, if I can. If not, the bubble wake me up. <laughs> I wake up about six thirty to let the dog out. Actually, that's six forty-five because I always I'm doing the the lazy on the bed. I take bubble, I rush, I prepare my food, and I go rushing to work. That I start to work at seven. 15 but I'm always late because I'm tired <laughs> so I get out at 4 30 I come home shit shower take Bobo to pool and pee and grab the things from the gym go to train train do cardio go back home take the dog to shit again <laughs> prepare my food and go to work at 8 30 9 until 12 30 and 1 o'clock then I get out at one o'clock, I prepare my meals for the next day, and I go to sleep around two. So that's not perfect always. Some days I make it late to work. Some days it's three o'clock and I can sleep. Some other days I just go to the gym and flirt around with the gym. And I say I'm here and leave. So, but I'm trying to make it always there. Yeah. And I have no social life. Um, it's bubble of me train and work and pretty much <laughs> my life is very boring actually <laughs> well, boring well it's not like you could fit a lot more in that's a pretty hectic schedule and the hours in the day disappear in one hell of a hurry don't they i don't have time for nothing like people tell me sometimes on my weekends i had to stop working on saturdays because it was too much work and i was getting Pretty much stressed and sick. So um, now Saturdays and Sundays I don't work, but I wake up asleep. I go to train. And people call me, "What you doing? I'm busy. What you doing? Nothing. <laughs> I'm busy. <laughs> doing what? Nothing. I'm just sitting down doing absolutely nothing. So I became so antisocial. Like I don't like anymore going away. I just want to train. I want to go train. That's it. Walk me through that. So when you're training, and I had said earlier about what amazes me about you athletes is you seem to have the ability to go somewhere completely different where you shut everything out so you can perform at a top level. But when you go into that gym, are, are, you, are you normally usually putting headphones in music, block everybody out, just want to be left alone? Where do you go? What does that look like? How does that create serenity in you? Normally, I like to go when it's nobody there. Mm -hmm. I put my headphones. I'm, I'm a headphone crackhead. If I don't have headphones, I need to go home to get my headphones. I can train. I can function. Um, the funny thing, one of the things that drive me is with so much, much hectic schedule, before I was training, training two or three times a day, now I can train by barely two hours every day. And I'm not getting lean, I'm not getting losing fat, my muscles doesn't grow. And it makes me angry. It's like, fuck, I'm working this fucking hard and this don't go. So my own madness drives me. When I see that I'm not losing no fat, when my one muscle decides not to grow when it works every day. When you super sore, where you don't see no changes. My own success 
make me keep going. When I see people that they have big shoulders and and I'm, I stare at them like I'm a <laughs> I'm a pervert. I'm looking men with shoulders <laughs> like with ass or something like that. Somebody who asks because I want big shoulders. And I I follow men with an eye like I saw, I don't know, something someone naked looking. I look people, I look their bodies, I look, I want that. And I, I that's my obsession. I want that. I want it. That's I'm obsessed. I want that. So that's your I drive. I want it. I want yeah. to I want to be successful. I want it. Yeah. And that's your driving force and that's pretty cool. I call that people creeping. You said a pervert. <laughs> I call it people I call it people creeping, Nina, and I do it all the time too. <laughs> I creep everybody. Oh my god. The people that's my, that between one foreign, I think different. I don't give a fuck what people think. I wonder why people are crazy just because I just don't give a fuck. I watch, you know, when you want a Ferrari and you look at, right? Yeah. You look the Ferrari, you want that. You appreciating that. I don't care what people think. I want shoulders. I want shoulders, big shoulders. <laughs> so, so Nina's Nina's going for the bolder shoulders, eh? You're... Yeah, because I need to match up my quads. Yeah. I'm very so... disappointed with my physique. <laughs> Seriously. What the hell? Okay, you, you stop thinking that way. God damn it. But no, I'm not. If I was stopping thinking that way, I would not move forward and be successful. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you got to do what you got to do. God damn Thank it. Thank you. <laughs> I love it. Hey, you know what? This has been awesome, and I really appreciate you taking the time to do this. And wow, do you have a story to tell. And uh, I don't know if you know Chris, Wat or Chris Watkiss. And uh, he's the one that put me on to you, actually. He, uh, yeah, he told me. He's yeah, a good guy. Yeah, he sure is. And I've had the great pleasure of meeting him and, and being in his presence a few times. And uh, I'm really glad, Nina, that he told me to reach out to you and, and get this done. And, and I know the Super League looks at you as a big part of the family. And, and uh, we, we hope to see you there real soon, thrashing it in the ring again. That'll be awesome. I, I have to win one time that's my drive it, that's i think it, that's my obsession win i don't care if i'm 60 i have to win once <laughs> okay i'm gonna hold you to that i i got you for the next 25 years 30 years or gonna make sure oh always i say i'm gonna be 65 i'm gonna be the finest motherfucker ever you know because <laughs> i'm gonna keep working my ass off i don't care if i need to be an olympian with 60 years or i will do yes you will i love it well, hey, let's do this again, and uh, I owe you a steak dinner. I'm a man of my word, so we're gonna we're gonna hook up one day somewhere. Absolutely. With so, mashed put garlic mashed potatoes. If they don't have garlic, garlic mashed potatoes, I don't want steak. We will get you the whole meal deal. Absolutely, <laughs> okay. I, I owe you that. And uh, I would sure like to run into you in Vegas here one day and uh, have some fun and get to know you personally. So. Thank you. I appreciate Thank you so much. this time. And uh, you have had an amazing journey. Holy shit. And keep doing what you're doing. You you really do inspire others uh, by the thousands, Nina. Not, I know you say one at a time, but you're doing it. And uh, it's greatly appreciated. And I'm one of them. Uh, you're, I'm, I'm your biggest fan, I think, right now. And you brought tears to this old fart's face, you bugger. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I will do many other times. I'm intense by nature. <laughs> oh you just keep being you i loved it thank you for today appreciate it thank you take care i give him do big hugs big hugs darling bye-bye bye-bye <laughs>